So what is this astral projection thing? Well, if you're here, you may have a decent idea of the principles of out-of-body travel and maybe even had a few amazing experiences. But I think you deserve to know the true significance of this phenomenon. I see hundreds of websites, chat rooms, meetup groups, and blogs every week discussing this subject. Why? Because it's completely entertaining to the human mind. It's what we feel directly answers all of our questions about the unknown. It links our imagination to all of the supernatural activity like telepathy, multiple dimensions, telekinesis, clairvoyance, and true soul travel. When we hear about the shamans documenting in their ancient wisdom a black hole at the center of the Milky Way galaxy, we think, these people really did this. When you come back from any higher plane and accurately download the experience back into your waking consciousness, I promise you, everything changes here, and it changes for the better. Although you may be familiar with the phenomena and understand the principles of out-of-body travel, I want to share with you in greater detail the important role it plays in your personal journey of conscious reunion with your source. I have made sharing this process my professional practice due to its profound impact on all who have ventured to learn and experience it. I share with you through experience when saying that separating your consciousness into a subtle body forever changes your perception of this third dimensional life experience. I also tell you that with this ability, you will know undoubtedly that you are your own healer and that you are not separate from the levels of consciousness attained by mystics and ascended masters. This very real ability has never been a great secret to anyone who sought its discovery. From the shamans of the Americas' soul travel to the ancient Tibetans' bardo, it was known. From the Egyptians' explanation of the Ka to the writings of Plato describing his double body, our natural ability to consciously exist beyond the physical body has been well documented historically. So allow me to bring some ancient wisdom into the present. I want to briefly take you through the process of separating your conscious awareness into a subtle body. So here goes. Let's look at the process on a physiological level first. Just seconds before the separation of any subtle body, a surge of energy flows from the base of the spine into the brain. In Christianity, this energy is referred to as the Holy Spirit. In the East, it is known as the Kundalini. This is also what the Oriental alchemists refer to as the circulation of the light. This energy culminates in the third eye area at the level of the pituitary and pineal gland to trigger the projection reflex, creating a carbon copy of your physical body. With your conscious awareness residing in this ether-based subtle body, there is still a sense of self, however, you are not limited to the third dimensional laws of physics. To be blunt, you really can fly and pass through any physical object from this state. This is not considered supernatural once you realize that this energy has generated a subtle body vibrating at a higher frequency than the dense physical matter. But whether a conscious separation occurs from the flow of Kundalini or not, Something else very real and interesting happens just from the awakening of this energy. And this is where your spiritual transformation process really takes off. There are in fact five functions of this kundalini energy, each with its own purpose in spiritual growth and transformation. The first type of flow creates a sexual orgasm. The second type of flow awakens an unstoppable driving curiosity to discover and know the actual God presence within you. This is the pivotal point in the journey to begin reconnecting to your source within any given lifetime. If indeed a conscious separation does occur following the spinal flow of Kundalini, once the out of body experience is accurately downloaded back into your waking consciousness, a number of changes begin to take place within your earth experience. Psychologically, changes begin with a new confidence that goes beyond all things. You feel an immediate, permanent shift in awareness regarding the death process. 
the ability to fully enjoy life but also detach becomes possible as your experience demonstrates that death is merely an altered state of vibration no longer requiring a physical body to house your consciousness. Understandably this all sounds a bit contrived. However, if you can honestly analyze any pain, fear, or frustration in your personal life experience back to its roots, attachment inevitably appears. Think about that, even if you take nothing else away from this video. At the social level, a growth into higher wisdom takes place, and you see clearly that everyone can exist on the same level of evolved knowledge and consciousness of truth. This creates a deep, heartfelt compassion without pity or judgment towards observing others in their struggles. As all of these new awareness factors begin to change the life experience, a noticeable growth is felt and the final process of connection to a true source can take place without the influence from the ego structure. This is what the alchemists refer to as coagulation. It is the seventh and final step in true transformation of consciousness from its base level of awareness into actively incarnating and releasing the astral body. This is also known as the greater or philosopher's stone. In this final transformation process, on a physiological level, a release of an elixir in the blood occurs rejuvenating the body into a perfect vessel of health. A brain ambrosia is released by the interaction of the light from the pineal gland and matter from the vulva and from the pituitary gland. This heavenly food both nourishes and energizes cells without any waste products being produced. By using the astral body consciously after experiencing these psychological and physiological changes, it is indeed possible to exist on all levels of reality. This is the beginning of true communication on a conscious level that is in tune with the Divine Mind. Now it's easier to write all of this off as New Age stuff, or just entertaining talk, and then go back into the synthetic environments that keep us distracted with superficial stimulants giving us temporary happiness. And then as we lay in bed at night, just before we drift off, that little voice starts to ask, why do so many things bother me? Why can't I control my emotions? How come my environment controls my mood and my reactions? Why don't I have the energy to be alert all day? Why am I unaware? Why am I afraid of death? The truth is, we are all fearless as well as defenseless when we operate from the higher states of consciousness after knowing our multidimensional reality firsthand through astral projection. And as always, I hope you don't believe anything I just told you, but I would be deeply honored if even one word inspired you to continue to find your personal truth. <laughs>